Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Could you please verify your identity? If you've made a purchase recently, you've probably had to verify your identity, give your zip code or the CVC code on the back of your card, or perhaps show someone your license. Sometimes, uh, my wife anyway, not me, still gets carded for alcohol. I think it's, you know, and they're... Usually when you get your identity checked, it's because people want to verify that you are who you say you are. However, today we're doing a self-identity check, um, looking at our own identity. Uh, who are you? You might be a daughter or a son. You might be a, a friend, or a mother, or a father, or a child, or a worker, or a retiree. Perhaps you're a Republican, or Libertarian, or Democrat. But we also are more than those things, right? We're more than our pastime, or our job, or our family role. Still, think that we can sometimes get a bit confused along the way about who we are, right? We can, as the expression goes, lose ourselves in this or that or the other. Life itself can be overwhelming at times, especially when hardships come our way. We might get so caught up in, in the pain or the frustration that we're feeling that we start to have trouble distinguishing ourselves from our emotions or experiences. As we celebrate All Saints Day, we certainly are taking time to remember loved ones uh, those who we love, who we miss, who have died in this past year, but more than just that, right? It's much longer than a year that we grieve sometimes. The death of, an, of a loved one can certainly overwhelm us, can cause us to question who we are and, and what our place is in this world. We also might lose ourselves in our jobs or in our pastimes or our obsessions it's possible to become so enmeshed in our jobs or families or, or even online that um, we don't really make any, or uh, many at least, decisions by ourselves. Instead, we're driven by our, our impulses or our schedules or the people around us. But as we celebrate All Saints Day, we are being reminded today who we really are and just as importantly, whose we are. It's a blessing for us to be here, either virtually or in person, with our fellow saints, that is, fellow Christians, who have repented and trusted in Jesus, because that, after all, is what a saint is. Often, when you've lost yourself, I think one of the best ways to find yourself, that, to use that expression, is to spend more time with people who, who love you more or less unconditionally, right? People who are not demanding a lot from you before they will give you love and support or attention or time. Here at church, we certainly may not always treat each other like that, but that is what we strive to do, I think, for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it's What's more, it's how we know that God loves us unconditionally. And when we lose ourselves, again, practically speaking, just in our own families or close friends, sometimes it's best to spend time with those who love us more unconditionally. And certainly it's true as we spend time with our Lord. Because God's not demanding that we have our lives together before he listens to our prayers. He's not waiting for us to become influential enough to follow us or waiting for us to contribute a certain amount to his cause before he'll meet with us. He doesn't charge us anything to have a counseling session with him. Rather, he tells us to come to him in prayer, as a child would, as Luther said, as a child would approach its loving father. That's why we say, not holy God or almighty God, but our father who art in heaven. He's always there for us. Uh, even... Even our own sins need not come between us because 
As Romans tells us, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This world can be a dangerous and uh, it can be a dangerous and depressing place. I mean, what more do I need to say than 2020, right? Um, so how can we hold on to who we are? Well, we throughout our lives we listen to all kinds of voices telling us who we are or who we aren't, what we should be like or uh, what we should like. Today. Let's listen again to the voice of our Savior, to the one who loved us and bought us back from death at the price of his very own blood. It's well worth our time. Our gospel lesson for today is from the Sermon on the Mount. There Jesus will not only give a name to the different things that we endure, but he reminds us who we are. Now, at this point, as we talk about the Sermon on the Mount, it's, it's important to remember that Jesus is not speaking to the crowds, at least not in the same way he is at many other points in his ministry. Rather, he's called his disciples to a mountaintop conference on discipleship, if you will. These disciples that it's referring are almost certainly more than just the 12, but significantly less than the giant crowds that he often talks to. And he's, he's talking to people who are interested and committed to, in some, to some degree, following him, his disciples. And he begins by talking about the identity of God's people, the identity of his disciples. And he, in the Sermon on the Mount, he prepares them for some of the difficulties that they face. It's, in a sense, it's a warning of, of uh, what to come. Don't be surprised when these things happen. Being his disciple does not deliver them from the hardships of living in this world. At times... It intensifies the pain. It might increase the hardship or the hurt in their lives. They are mourning. They are humbled. They are poor in spirit. They will sometimes be hated, attacked, perhaps even persecuted. Their very lives will be threatened at times. But that's not who they are, right? Who are they? They are blessed. In every one of these circumstances and all these not-so-pleasant things, it says that they are blessed. They are blessed even though they are mourning, poor in spirit, despised, attacked, and persecuted. Uh, did you hear that? The blessings that God gives to you and me can't be touched or compromised by what is going on in the world around us. The gospel is more resilient more all-encompassing than any hardship or circumstance that you are facing even right now. Even if your life stinks, you are still blessed. You may feel cursed, people may curse you, but God blesses you. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount is not really giving us a command or instructions on life in the Beatitudes. Jesus doesn't say, be poor in spirit, or be merciful, or act like you're persecuted. No, he assures the disciples that they are blessed. Jesus is telling disciples, those who are already, or who will experience being poor in spirit, meek, or persecuted for his name's sake, that they will be blessed. Are you mourning? Do you grieve still for the loss of a loved one? Does the, the pain and the hurt in the world around you cause you grief or make you cry out, Why, Lord? Don't let your sorrow make you forget that you are indeed blessed. Do you hunger or thirst for righteousness? Do you wish that there was no racism, that people could be civil and kind to one another in, in an election year? Do you wish we could come to common sense solutions for the problems our nation faces? Or do you, is it simply that your own sins and failures make you wish that you were more righteous and holy? Don't let the ache for a good society or a more holy and God-pleasing life make you forget that you are blessed. Because you are blessed. And it doesn't matter that it's 2020 
It doesn't matter that the world can be topsy-turvy at times. The world can't change the fact that you are blessed. Uh, the, because that blessing comes through Christ Jesus and His promises uh, to us. Today is, and we are reminded that it's All Saints Sunday. Uh, and that reminds us that we are God's holy chosen people. That is, we are saints. What does it mean to be a saint? Well, it can mean a couple different things. In the, in the Roman Catholic Church, it means that you're in a, a special category, all of your own. If you're a saint, the Lord is listening closely to what you pray for. You, and, you have earned a favored status as a publicly recognized saint. Um, but the scriptures tell us that we don't have to do anything to earn a favored status in God's sight. In fact, you are. That's exactly, I just said what Roman Catholics believe a saint is, and that's basically what we believe. It's just that we don't believe there's a special class of saints, but that all of us are saints by grace. Now, the scriptures tell us in John chapter 1, but to all, not some, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's much more highly valued status than being a child, right? With the exception of a spouse, perhaps, there's no higher category of love than you can get to, right? You, you can't get any better than that. There's no greater love than live, loving our children. And God has made us his children. I mean, if there's another separate category of saints, separate from being a child, well, I'd rather be a child than anyway. And that's what God says we are. In fact, God says we are both. We are a saint and a child of God. Because that's what happened at our baptism, right? To be a saint, I said, was to be uh, to have earned a special favor and status in God's sight and to be publicly recognized. Well, that's exactly what happens at our baptism. God has made us his own, including us in the Holy Family, on God's name. We're baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We take the name as, uh, of Christ as we become Christ Yuns. You have been publicly recognized as God's holy child. You are a Christian which is really just a shortcut for saying that you are God's dearly loved child. You are a child, you are a saint, because God has set you apart from this world. You are special in God's book, and that's the book that really matters. You are in a special category all of your own because of the grace of God demonstrated for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be going through it, but know that you are nonetheless blessed. The Lord will see you through this, and he will see you face to face on the day of the resurrection of all flesh. In Jesus' name.